believing. But nowadays, that's not always the best phrase to live by. Because here in the 21st century, we have many different ways to fool our eyes and confuse our minds. Before the time of Photoshop and darkroom manipulation, one could have assumed that what is seen in an image is what is true. But wait, there are other factors that come into play when questioning the truth of a photograph. Let's start with what comes first to mind with most people, Photoshop. In Photoshop, you can have minor or major adjustments, but where do we draw the line? This is an example of a minor manipulation in Photoshop. You can see things like contrast, saturation, and basic colors are changed or lightened. That's not too bad, right? Now this is an example of a major manipulation in Photoshop. Now in this one, you can see the colors are changed and lightened just like in the last one. But you can also see that the skin tone has changed, wrinkles have been smoothed, looks made bigger and more colorful, eyelashes darkened, and the eyes look almost fake. Now you've seen examples of photos manipulated in Photoshop, but what about before the age of electronics? Before digital cameras, people took pictures with film cameras and developed their pictures in the darkroom by hand. Now you may think that these photos couldn't have been manipulated right, but wrong. There is such a thing as darkroom photo manipulation. Jerry Yulesman is probably the best known darkroom photography manipulator. He used techniques such as burning, dodging, and masking to manipulate his images. These are some examples. So now that we've seen examples of techniques of different photo manipulations, you probably think that's it. But think again. There's more. What about techniques such as framing to deceive the viewers? Framing in photography is used to shape our attention and select what we view. Different framing techniques can greatly influence how we view an image. For example, as you can see in this image, depending on what you cut out, different messages are received. On one side, we see a soldier pointing a gun at a man's head, used to make the soldier look bad. On the other side, we have the soldier giving water to the man, used to make the soldier look good. When in reality, we don't really know the story behind the image. So as you can see, what message someone receives can be greatly influenced by framing and photography. Now that you've seen all these examples, next time, make sure you think twice before believing what you see in an image.